Welcome to Biblical Foundations for Africa, an in-depth look at the Bible as we learn how to discover God for ourselves as Christians in Africa. Join the Biblical Foundations team as they lead you through this exciting journey through the Bible. Let's get started. Hello there and welcome to another session at Biblical Foundations for Africa coming to you from Johannesburg in South Africa. You know, we exist to encourage every single African Christian to read, to believe and to understand the Bible for themselves and then to go out into every single sphere of our society and make Jesus Christ glorious. My name is Norma. I've been a follower of Christ for 24 years now, and I have never regretted my decision. It's my absolute privilege to be your traveling companion as we explore the treasures of God's word together. So today, as diligent students of the word, we're going to be discussing how we go about finding and choosing a good Bible so that we can use it for our Bible study. Now, there's a story that's often told about a young man who was preparing to leave his rural village to find work in the big city. His father was quite wealthy because he owned quite a large herd of cattle that he would slaughter and sell from time to time. Now, as the evening before the son was preparing to leave drew nearer, the father called together the entire village. He slaughtered a cow and he threw his son a massive going away party. During this party, the father gave a speech, and in his speech, the father pledged to give his son his most important and prized possession. At the end of his speech, the father produced a very old and very well-read Bible, and he promised his son that if he would read this Bible every day, he would find everything that he needed inside it. The son's heart just sank. This wasn't what he was expecting. But politely, he accepted the Bible from his father's hand and he set off for the city the very next morning. When he arrived in the city, he found a place to stay. He unpacked his bags. He put the Bible on a shelf and he promptly forgot all about it. After a few months in the city, things had been very difficult and he was discouraged. Work was hard to find and he missed his family, especially the wisdom of his father. Then he remembered the Bible that the father had given him. Perhaps if he read it, he would find the same comfort, strength and encouragement that his father had often found in it many times in the past. So he dusted it off from the shelf and he started to read it. It wasn't long before he noticed that something was stuck between the pages of the Bible. He eagerly flipped the pages and he found an envelope full of money and a letter from his father pledging that everything that the father owned actually belonged to the son and that it was available to him any time that he needed it. Next to the envelope, the father had highlighted Psalm 119 verse 162. I rejoice in your word like one who discovers a great treasure. You see, the Bible, which is the word of God, contains very great treasures, not merely money, but spiritual treasures. But in order for us to obtain these treasures, we need to read the word of God diligently every day. Therefore, the type of Bible that we own and how we use that Bible will determine whether we're able to access these treasures. So today we want to talk briefly about how we go about selecting and choosing a Bible that will help us to dig up the treasures of the word of God. So the first thing we need to know when we're thinking about investing in a good Bible is that there are different types of Bible translations. Remember that the Bible was not originally written in English or in any other African language. The Bible was originally written in three languages. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew and Aramaic and the New Testament was written in Greek. So our modern day Bibles that are written in other languages are what we call translations. Now, there are basically three types of Bible translations that you can get. The first type of translation is what's called a literal translation. That's right, a literal translation. This is basically a word for word translation which tries to stay very close to the original Hebrew and Greek. The great thing about this type of Bible is that it stays very close to the original language, but it can sometimes sound a bit awkward and a bit hard to understand. 
Some examples of literal translations are the King James Version and the New King James Version. The second type of translation is called a dynamic equivalent translation. This translation captures or tries to give the contemporary equivalent meaning while staying true to the original meaning. The great thing about this translation is that it's much easier to read and understand. Some examples of dynamic equivalent translations are the New International Version or the NIV, which is very popular in African evangelical churches, as well as the New Revised Standard Version. The third type of translation is called a paraphrase translation. This type of translation is more concerned with getting across the general meaning rather than with ensuring the exact wording of the original text is followed. This makes it very easy to read, but it may end up compromising on some of the original meaning of the text. Some examples of paraphrase translations are the Message, the Living Bible, and the Amplified Bible. Here's the big thing. We need to know that the original manuscripts of the Bible were written by prophets and apostles who were inspired by the Holy Spirit, and these original manuscripts are perfect. But when it comes to translations, it's often up to translators to make a call as to which words are better to use than others. So while the scripture itself is perfect, each translation has its strength and its drawbacks. So now, how do you go about choosing a Bible translation that can help you to study the word of God, know what God is saying, and find true spiritual treasures in the word of God? Well, we have three tips and recommendations for you. First of all, we'd like to recommend that you must own and use more than one translation of the Bible. Ten years ago, this would have been very expensive, but nowadays it's cheaper and easier because most translations are available online for free. So use them so that you can read the Bible both for enjoyment and also for study. Personally, I've often found it very useful when I'm reading the word to have two or three versions available and to read the scriptures in all three versions in order to get a clearer understanding of what it means. Secondly, we'd like to recommend that if you're going to be a serious student of the word, that you should invest in a study Bible, a study Bible that's based on a literal translation or a dynamic equivalent translation. Study Bibles usually have notes and cross-references that allow you to study both the context and the usage of different words in different places in the Bible. So, for example, you'll find that the one English word love is found in many different scriptures and contexts in the Bible. But the Hebrew and Greek have many different words that could be translated love depending on the context. So, if we study John 3.16, which says that God so loved the world... We would also need to know that the type of love referenced in this scripture is different from the type of love referenced in 1 Timothy 2 verse 10, which talks about the love of money. Finally, we'd like to recommend that you do some research on the Bible that you'd like to purchase by asking mature Christians around you, such as your pastor or your ministry team leader, about the Bible translations that they are using and why they like them. Carefully consider their advice and then make your decision. So just a quick recap then. Firstly, we recommend that you use three or four translations when you're studying. Secondly, we recommend that you invest in a good study Bible that's based on a literal or a dynamic equivalent translation. And thirdly, we recommend that you do your own research from other mature Christians. I hope this helps you to start digging up the treasures of God's word. In one of our next segments, we're going to discuss how to read the Bible so that we get the most out of it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving us your written word in the form of the Bible. I thank you for all the translators that have taken time to translate this Bible into a language that I can understand. Lord, I pray that you'd help me to be a good and diligent student of your word by reading it daily. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our website can point you to more great resources that can help you with any further questions that you might have. Find us right here every weekday with a new installment of Biblical Foundations for Africa. Feel free to chat to us on any of our social media channels. Be blessed and remember as you go out today to make Jesus glorious. Thank you for joining us today on our Biblical Foundations for Africa lesson. To find out more information, join us on our website www.biblicalfoundationsafrica.com.
Also, we'd love to have you as our friend on our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. See you next time.